X is said, yeah. X is received, and I'm going to hear X come back in some form in your voice. I see what I said meant to you in terms of this overlap, the functional overlap yeah, yeah. in the spoken space of what we're both imagining. So we don't have to imagine the same things, but there has to be a functional overlap in what we hear. So sure, in meaning and feeling. Right. And but and then the return of it, the return of the reincorporation of what one person said into what another from what you know what I mean. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have to like draw up, you know, I have to point to like little cartoon faces, right? To make my point, but it's an easy point. The issue with that going on is the essential medium of play. So I'm, I said I would black box play a little bit. I'm only black boxing it a little because we're going to go deeper into those functions in a moment. But to do that, we have to understand where it would be going, where it would be going. Remember how I said the initial opening of the imagined scene, imagined in our two different ways, the initial opening, mm -hmm. Sammy, the camera crew, you know, the storm or the, the blackout, you know, all sorts of things. All this, when we're done playing for the moment, what has changed? There are three levels of change. Right now, I only mean the raw fictional change of situation. The, so what has changed? I'm sure you can list them. They're super easy. What has changed in the diegesis? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, his life shapers have now touched reality and given us uh, a way forward hinged Too upon abstract. a real event that we stay can... diegetic. What's changed? Is the goblin dead or not? Like if we were fighting. No, we've just. Yeah, no, we're we've just got a hint of the goblin that we're faded to face. Distracted you? Yes, okay. I distracted you a little bit by saying goblin. Sorry. What? So what's changed in the diegetic terms alone? No symbolism, no abstractions. Well, I think if I may project on your character a little bit, Please do. that he's recognized that he's recognized a direction in a way that if I want to get Joseph Campbellian, I might say the call to action has been answered or will. Or at least. So heard. he now has, he now has, yeah, he now, instead of being a free floating actor in the diegesis, uh, he now is a motivated atomic unit with a direction um, and we, and I also want to say something else has changed. His relation to his puppeteers has not obviously been broken or overcome, but it has shifted position a little bit. So every one of those puppeteers is now on a back foot and is going to do something about it, probably. Uh, well, Bledo almost certainly will. Right. Karina is happy with you because you succeeded in your sure. role. But, it, but of course, I that was, means not, that I was not sure, really. I, I needed to I right. needed to remain open to right. whatever you wanted to do. So I, I did not really decide whether Karina had more power than Bledo or not until until we got into it a little bit. And then I decided, oh, yeah, she has a lot more. Power. Sure. But that's fine. What I'm saying is that I'm looking now at the change in the fiction itself. So your processes of when you made it up are of no interest to the diegesis, none. The diegesis doesn't care which piece was made up with. True, so true, I know, I'm explaining again. Yeah, so therefore, looking at the change, um, she has changed a bit, and her, you know, her the, the interest she represents her as a monolith, right, that particular company, has changed a little bit and, and they've acquired me, right? They've acquired me for Sammy's slipstream adventures. So that's a big change. Sammy's situation of his job, right? He's got another, you know, job to do. Um, and again, right, Black's Flex Bleedo is going, is, you know, has adjustments. So Sammy's changed. The cosmetics company has changed and their rep. 
black black flicks and their various interests, you know, various components of power have changed a little bit. Sammy's mm-hmm. relationship to the audience has changed mm-hmm. a bit, right? So all this yeah. and Super Guy, as you very rightly point out, Super Guy has changed. So right. now you and I are looking in terms of diegesis, you and I are looking at a changed situation. And not only that, it's fictional strength, which was just a promise we now know is a working medium. So as fiction, the warp and woof of the fiction has become something that is now a functional activity of human mm-hmm. contact rather than a promise. Okay, I'm with you. So that's yeah, one yeah. level of change. Second level of change. The unlocking of systemic aspects of the game. Through two means. Mm -hmm. One means is just that I understand it a little bit better than I did before, no matter how much I read it. Doing this connects me with it in a way that is, you know, cannot be duplicated in any other fashion. So there's that simple interaction with it. And then furthermore, there's also the unlocking, as I say, of things like through more experience points eventually or whatever that, um, will the rules will change on us it's like going up a level you're playing a slightly different game now right in D or something right. Right. so it's that kind of change in the systemic availabilities which may be very formal or they may be a little bit informal because that first component that i talked about just familiarity and a sense of use is 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 real okay so that's the second kind of change third kind of change our relationship to the material as people our relationship, what you're calling the writer's room, which I'm not going to talk about whether it's a good term or not, because we're not talking about the text, the principles that you are invoking um, with that concept, um, which is that, and I'm going to put it slightly differently, I've got to be fucking doing this on purpose as a human being, right? I got to want to come and do this thing because I like what we're doing and the impacts, I mean, people use different words. I mean, they used to say theme, and then everybody got all upset about theme. And I'm talking about like culturally, not just in recent dialogues. Uh, then they would say resonance, and everybody thought resonance was cool, uh-huh. and it's kind of more kind of, you know, more more groovy sounding, you know, more more systemic feeling, right? And then just That's a good one. Thing. Yeah, and then... Um, and then you can also say relevance, but relevance became uncool because everybody decided the 70s doesn't exist. History begins and ends with the 80s now. So therefore, we can't say relevance because that's uncool. Um, but those are the things I that literally I'm say about. meaning with right, a right. capital M. I'm it, with you as well, in which case you're running all the way back to the 19th century. And now people can debate the meaning of meaning for a really long time. So... Um, so, but but I'm with you, okay? But that's that third level of change, isn't it? A yeah, new yeah. human relation to those things. And of course, it's intertwined with the fiction, the diegesis itself, because you relate to it. You both made it, and you relate to it as audience at the same time, and it's interactive, and then we all start raving about this medium that goes so unappreciated. So... With this, and do you see what I mean by change? We got inspiration, necessary, but not sufficient. And then confirmation of the inspiration in the form of these changes in the game, right, in the right. fiction, and among ourselves. Sounds really groovy and everything, but I think everything I just said is not only concrete, but demonstrated in the last half hour. So, yeah, super oh, not I would agree. Enough. In fact, demonstrated right. anytime. Anytime a game works, that um, is working. You're explaining that's the, what game working that's is. That's what it is. Right. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> exactly. Now we're gonna. If you think of this, I have a diagram. Of course, I have a fucking diagram for this. And so, but if we go to from that change, then there's something that I kind of handed out a second ago, is that we can go back around to inspiration. That what that this whole change situation is actually a better form 
of inspiration for continuing to play. And that continuing to play can either be just continuing to play in the most literal sense, we'll meet for another session, we'll keep playing, or it is, um, you'd say it's a one-shot game, right? It only lasted for one session. Well, how do you play again? Lots of ways. You either do it again with other people some other time, or you promulgate it. You say, I mean, this is an important part of this. You, you socially validate that you've played this thing. Not because, you know, you bought into it as a Kickstarter, so therefore you're going to, you know, go after your sunk cost and socially validate it by pumping the game. No, you are authentically pleased about having to do this, and you communicate this to other humans in some way. I like that. Right? Well, that This is surprising. my diagram, right? Yeah. This is the thing. This is the authenticity of the whole thing that doesn't give a shit about the hobby, doesn't give a shit about publishing, doesn't give a shit about commerce. Well, it does give a shit about the hobby. You promulgate in order to grow the not hobby, the which sub, is no, 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 not the subculture of the hobby. I'm talking about the activity. Oh. Yes, I agree with you if we're talking about the activity. Gotcha. And a given practitioner, however, is not obligated to grow the activity to more people. They are not obligated. No, but it's certainly a good thing. Your opinion. I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> I may agree with you, but in principle, it is merely a position, right. a personal position. So, okay. right, it is yeah. it is merely accidental if Stanley Kubrick inspired someone else to literally be Stanley Kubrick. There you go, right. uh, or to <laughs> or someone else, even better, perhaps someone else to say, "Fuck Stanley Kubrick, man, I'm doing this." Right? I mean, <laughs> fuck all of his little tricks. It's Dogma ninety five in Denmark, baby. Natural light. So, which you're getting right now, the sun is now blazing in on me um, from the, the early, the very, very, very late winter, early spring sky. So, um, ooh, boy, and it's really getting in my eyes, too. Whew. I'm, I'm going to shift a bit. I, um, I broke a lens <laughs> on, my, on my glasses in my recent trip to the Arctic Circle, and um, at the very end of the trip, fortunately. Um, and so these are my old glasses and they're all scratched up and the sunlight on them is like two spears oh. driving into my eyes. So, all right. Um, this is a little bit better. So if we look at this, if, if you, I mean, I'll, I'll share the diagram with you, of course, but this whole thing, inspiration to change, getting to the change and particularly that, that, that human aspect of it that I mentioned called the, the, the best way to say it is we're doing this on purpose, right? We're doing uh -huh. this, this fiction with these people using this system on purpose. And you can't know that until you've actually felt it take on momentum, felt it take on uh, that, that reincorporation interaction I talked about. So that is the critical point. Without that, and the enjoyment of the diegetic change is part of that, without that, you are, all promotion of the game is inauthentic. All opinions about the game are inauthentic. Um, all, without that, you now you can say, okay, it didn't happen. That's true. But that, that's not inauthentic. But I'm talking about the positive side right now. So if we... Do you mean in the sense that all all film criticism is inauthentic because you're not the critic? All film criticism is inauthentic because they are not audience. They uh -huh. are performers okay. in the larger picture of the identity of this film. They are part of production. Right, which excludes them from being you, the audience member, subjectively affected by the film as you're watching it. It's Precisely. It's a totally yeah. different type. Right. Of, Even yeah, if you're yeah. hyper-intellectual about it, that's fine. Go ahead. Be super critical with a with a with a with a lowercase c that can be part of being a, a, of, a, of an audience member but as soon as you yeah, cross your you. arms the, as soon as you cross your arms at the coffee table and adopt your best gene siskel patronizing you know diction to your friends at the coffee table after seeing the film as soon as you do that fuck you you're not audience anymore i'm not interested in right. it at all so okay yeah yeah so with this um i'm 
going for now the one thing that I did black box. What the fuck did we do in that business of, you know, moving in from the, the moment this, the moment freight words started being used that were available for reincorporation by one another, the moment that began, what the fuck did we do procedurally? which has such a result, which is so fulfilling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that okay. in my worst so, moments, in my worst moments, I'll actually put a capital A on the word art. I try to keep myself from yeah. doing that, but sometimes I'll put a capital A on that mm -hmm. and catch myself and slap my wrist. Okay. So I, I do put a capital A on that. And if I, if I can, in my own, uh, I'm, I'm a fantastic. So in, in my own sort of, symbolic way right. let me express what i think we did okay by suggesting the setting i am offering to wrap you in something and you agreed to be wrapped in it and then i asked you to use a little bit of randomization to spark some ideas actually i chose that would goal, create right mm -hmm. yes that's true um that would spark some ideas which formed data points in this enveloping circle that I'm, my goal will be to maintain it. Even if you let it lag, I will fill it back up again. Um, that's part of my job. So while I've got that enveloping circle around you, I'm encouraging you to spark ideas and connect them so that a pattern begins to form that becomes your character. But then off of that, the life shapers are important because they draw lines of flight out from the character into the world. That's the next step. When we actually stop, now we're done with Kerrigan. I've got this circle and I've got an object in the middle of it and it has lines of flight extending out from it. That's enough for me to start with. Mm -hmm. you've now got the, you've the got plot the skeleton of your plot field. And again, if other things pop into existence as pieces of that plot field as we play, Again, the diegesis doesn't not. care when they came in or when they didn't. Right. The game may be very procedural about that, or it may be very forgiving or loose about that. I don't care. Not in principle. Right. And it matters for this game, but it doesn't kind of... matter in principle. Right? Yeah, exactly. I was making it up on the spot, but what I was really trying to do was simulate uh, having made it up before. <laughs> I, I totally get it, but don't get wrapped up in that. Again, I keep trying to kind of diminish the importance right. of that. This so, notion of... So, right, go on. So here's... Here's the deal. Like it's just sort of, I, it's taking me so many words to say it, but it's really pretty simple. It is. I approach you. I approach you in an embrace. You accept the embrace and stand inside it. You create a few dots. I help you conject connect the dots, and then you create. You're the one who says where the life shapers are. You create at least two lines of flight that I can connect to things right. in that big circle, and that's where we begin. You have to begin right it doesn't that's so our right. minimum because start. change hasn't happened yet we're going to do that through play right. now this is all very good in terms of setup i'm going to give you one thing to think about that think about regarding that which is if you go back i hope you watch this recording at some point because if you go back you'll discover that everything you said in relationship with game master to player is exactly reciprocal i Mirror. threw yeah, you yeah, yeah, sammy yeah. ray which is, and certain aspects of Sammy Ray, which you were like bounced. And I mean, in a good way. You're like, whoa, if that's yeah. going on, then I get to do way more and way more freely and without taking care of Ron. Yes. Right. And exactly. this is something that I, uh, uh, that core kind of assumes, and again, it's difficult, getting back to my pedagogical question, right, behind all this, it's difficult to express in a way that's both instructional and evocative, I guess exactly. is the word, but, Correct. right, so, so there's that problem, um, because I, the fact that I'm the GM and you're the player, there's, there's, there's no authority there, we're really doing the same right. thing, the fact that I consider my arms to be the enveloping circle and you to be the object within it really doesn't place any ontological significance on me. You are actually exactly. more important than I am. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. Okay. Um, you will note if we go all the way back 20 years into Sorcerer and Sword, you will see me discussing playing the bass in a rock band. Mm -hmm. Right. 